Okay, in other words, when Jesus talks about this church, he's saying, you know what? These people, they may have thought that this is a healthy church. You know, we're active, we're flourishing. We may even be starting new ministries. I mean, on the outside, everything was looking good. And then all of a sudden, you know, as, as you almost want to say, as Buford T. Puster would put, or Buford T. Justice would say, you know, this is going to be a setup. It's going to be a setup. Because you know what? I think there's sometimes in churches there's stinking thinking that goes on. Okay, the stinking thinking is, you know, we're growing. And, and from the outside, everything looks right. But on the inside, maybe things aren't that good. And that was what was taking place in the church of Thyatira. They were looking good on the outside. It looked like things were going well. It looked like they were healthy. And yet Jesus says this, Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. Remember Jezebel? All the way back in 1 Kings? Let me ask you this. Has anybody here, by show of hands, anybody here name a kid Jezebel? Anybody? I mean, do you know anybody named Jezebel? I mean, and that's for good reason, right? Remember Jezebel? Jezebel was the wife of King Ahab. Now, Ahab was nasty, but Jezebel, she was far worse. I mean, Jezebel introduced the worship of Baal or Baal into the, into the, the, the nation of Israel. Okay, she would chase prophets around looking to stop them and, and looking to murder them. She murdered prophets, and she introduced immorality into the nation. And what was taking place is the people were being led astray. They were following what she was, what, what, what she was teaching, and they were tolerating sin, and they were falling away from God. And so Jezebel was this extremely sinful person. See, uh, Billy Graham once said it like this. Billy Graham says, we have largely lost sight of God's holiness. We have, largely lost, we have largely lost sight of holiness and purity of God today. This is one reason why we tolerate sin so easily. We've lost sight of the holiness and purity of God. Okay, so let me ask you. When you hear that word holy, what comes to mind? When you hear the word holy, what comes, I mean, is it flowing robes and candles? When you hear the word holy, maybe you picture in your mind a monk. I mean, God himself said, you shall be holy because I am holy. But do you know what holy means? To be holy means to, to divide or to mark off, to be something different, to set apart from all else. To be holy is the opposite of being profane. To be holy is the opposite of being common. To be holy is the opposite of being ordinary. To be holy is to be different, distinct, or completely and totally unique. And when it comes to God, right, I mean, God is completely and totally holy. He's distinct. He's different than us. God is without sin. And God does not tolerate sin. And yet here's his church that was being led astray. The church of Thyatira was flirting with sin. Now, I think this brings up a good point, because in all honesty, there's a hard tension that you and I face every day, right? I mean, we, we are followers of Jesus. We want to live for a holy God, right? We have a God that is, that is very clear-cut on what his will is and what, his, what goes against his will. And we want to live for God. We want to live holy lives. We want to be holy just like God is holy. And yet we live in a culture that preaches tolerance. And to be intolerant, intolerance is not tolerable, Okay, and, what, and our, the way our, our culture defines tolerance is to believe and agree with everyone and everything. 